The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. All right, so Keith Gobbard with Canola Council of Canada. I'm the agronomy specialist for South Central Alberta. Here today to talk about canola storage. You can see behind me we've got just a flat bottom bin. We've recently completed harvest at this farm and got a number of bins that we'll probably be able to look at today. But this one's partially full. You'll take a look in here. Uh, one of the concerns when you're, when you're storing canola, uh, this sample looks relatively clean, but uh, what you're, what you're going to be concerned about is around the edges of the bin, if you take a look inside, you'll see that there's some, some chaff piles and things that aren't necessarily canola for, uh, for storage purposes. And one of the concerns as you fill a bin, especially if it's a bin that's not aerated and you don't have a lot of options for, for uh, conditioning that, that grain, is to make sure that it goes into the bin in good condition and that you keep monitoring it. So a bin like this is going to have 2,000 bushels or so of, of canola in it and we're not, uh, not likely to be able to check it all that well. There's no moisture cables, there's, uh, you're restricted to probing this bin to keep track of what's going on in it. What we don't want to have happen for a producer is that on a nice frosty morning they look out in about three weeks time and notice that there's no frost or snow on the top of a couple bins in their row and canola is a, a little too expensive to, to not monitor more carefully than that. So canola being a small, small seeded oil seed is really kind of hard to seal the bin up as well as you'd like and as we go down this row of bins you'll notice that near some of the doors there's a couple gallons of canola that managed to leak out despite the, the farmers best efforts on sealing those bins up especially when you start to put a little aeration and give a little pressure behind that so what you want to do is have a bin that's, that's uh, as uh, watertight as you can make it and still have some ability for air to exit that bin especially as you as you aerate it Predominantly you're going to be worried about leaks of uh, moisture coming in that could create some hot spots or, or uh, areas where spoilage might start. But also you're going to make sure that there's no pinholes that will let canola start, start leaking out. It's, uh, it's one of the hardest cereals or one of the hardest crops we have uh, on the prairies to, to uh, seal a bin up. So a, a, a corrugated steel granary like this is really nice. It's pretty easy to, to caulk or, or duct tape any, any leaks that happen in uh, in the granary or around the doors. One of the concerns as, as you are storing grain or canola on your farm is that you may have issues with insects in stored grain and some of the treatments that you'd use in cereals just aren't applicable for, uh, for canola. One of the bigger concerns on, on canola is that uh, we don't want canola stored in a bin that's been treated with malathion. If that bin has been treated with malathion or has a grain dust that's treated with malathion, you want to have at least six months time frame of, of, of uh, that bin being empty and airing, airing out before you would have uh, the ability to store canola in again. And six months is a really long time. We get our crop in and out of the field in, uh, in less time than six months. So malathion is essentially just off limits for treating of any grain bins or, or grain that's also stored in the bin you're going to put canola in this fall. It's one of the reasons that we're, uh, we're concerned about malathion is that it, it likes to tie up in, in the oil in the canola. So it's, it's really got an affinity for, for that particular seed and more importantly the oil component in there. So to keep, uh, to keep our canola in an export ready condition and, and have it uh, marketable on the world stage, we really can't have any insecticide residues that aren't, aren't permitted there. All right, so, so the, the grower here has, has commented that he's got a wide variety of temperatures, not so much a wide variety of, of moisture on this farm, but mentioned that uh, coming out of the field in mid-afternoon he was easily getting temperatures above 30 degrees in his stored grain and made an effort to get that grain into some aeration bins where he wouldn't have to handle it uh, all that much more and he'd be able to manage that high temperature and bring it down in a in a timely fashion. The bin behind me uh, isn't full but the bins that are like this growers can can take out maybe a third of the bin or a quarter of the bin uh, after it's sat for a bit just to disrupt that convection cycle where where the grain will be bringing some moist air up through the center of the bin and, and maybe collect right up at the top. So if you can suck out that cone uh, and bring, bring, break up that cycle, you're really, uh, really at an advantage. And it's probably best to do that when the temperature is quite a bit cooler than the grain uh, went into the bin at, so that you can maybe do that once and monitor it and make sure you're successful in, in uh, breaking that cycle and, and having the grain in a condition where you can store it uh, long term, or at least as long as you need to. One of the other things that it's nice to know to have an, to have an 
an accurate sample on each of these bins, uh, you're not going to be able to market your crop all at one point. And it's pretty nice to know which bin may may give you trouble and you know, get that off the farm first. So if you've got something that's, you know, 9, 10, 10 and a half percent, or, or perhaps at a little higher temperature, if you can move that bin first or perhaps pull a little bit out of the bins that are uh, maybe on your on your suspect list, at least you know that you're starting to uh, starting to break up any of those convection cycles that might be moving moisture around those bins and, and get it sent off uh, and, and marketed in a timely fashion.